Hi everyone, this is John McCrick and I want to welcome you to episode 18, 10, 5 and 3. 10, 5, 3, you'll learn Tic Tac with this goes on all the time. It's the episode 18 of the Ask Big Mac Show. Now before I get started, and I say this every time, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel here. There it is, YouTube channel. I'm pointing to the wretched thing uh, here. So Booby, let's get on with the show. What's the first question? And I want a really penetrative one. Do me a Paxman. Really test my brain and catch me out. Come on Booby, catch me out. First question from Adam who calls himself Ads oh. on Twitter. Do you think there should be more evening racing? Well, very good point, as to Adam. Um, it's market forces to, to decide it. If racecourses believe they would get more people in, and um, as far as the attendance goes and the and the competitiveness goes, they would have more evening racing. Obviously, the weather and the the lights are a big factor for all the year round and different things, and they got lighting and everything like that. Yes, I think you know get, it gets people to go more. If it does, I'm all for it. Market forces would decide it. But it's not really quality racing, isn't it? The, the Brigadier Gerard at Sandown in um, in May, for instance, one of, the, one of the big sort of evening meetings. It's not much quality evening racing. because we're leaving out the all-weather, the Wolverhamptons and the Chelmsford and that kind of thing. That they are, they are part of it. I think evening racing is terrific. Saturday evenings, everybody loves Saturday evenings. Keeps the betting shops turnover going round. I'm all for it. But in the end, great believer in market forces. If the public want to go and the race courses believe they'll get them, they'll put on more evening racing. So it is up to the courses, up to the managements, but clearly there is a call for it. Windsor evening, Monday evenings at Windsor, for instance, like the old days at Alexandra Park, Ali Pali used to love all that. So there is a place for evening racing, but let the managements decide. They'll know what's best for their courses, and that, in the end, if it's good for them, is good for the punters. Right, come on, Booby, question number two. Question number two from Scott Bardwick on Facebook who asks, fields in top graded races on jumps mm. seem to be getting smaller and smaller mm. every year by year pre Cheltenham and Aintree. What can be done to make the big level weight races more competitive? Yeah, well, Scott, it's, it's, you know, what you're saying has been going on down the years. You can say they're getting worse or they're getting a bit better than they were. The fact is that all these are trials. All the, so much of the season is, revolves around Cheltenham and then Aintree and Punches down the areas and all that kind of thing. So they are the targets. So all these races are building up to it. So do you want a really tough, hard race and taking on the very best sort of a championship ra a race um, tactically that you're taking on before you go for, go for the big ones um, it, it is a difficult thing and horses avoid each other if you know like Faheen for instance who wants to take Faheen on the, the monster that he's proving to be so it's a, a kind of thing that the opposition affects it do you want to stretch your animal your champion horse that you're aiming everything for or give it a really hard race in, in a condition race. It is very, very difficult. I don't think they're getting any smaller. I remember Gold Cups used to be three or four runners at a Gold Cup in times you've had. So times have changed um, as to uh, overall where the small fields are. My own view, and this is a, sort of a slightly separate issue, I don't believe any race, and I kept on arguing this, any race should be under six runners. If you can't get more, if you can't get uh, more six runners or more, it shouldn't be run mainly or really for integrity reasons. Whenever people talk about fixed races, small fields you think are involved, they're obviously the easier ones if there's going to be any fixing going on. So to reassure the public, there shouldn't be any race under six runners. Obviously, if six are declared and one's taken out late and goes late, that's fine. But I wouldn't have any race. If the derby can't get more than six runners in it, I'd cancel the derby. So it's either way you can reopen it, keep it reopened, and all that sort of thing, but no race under six runners. So that would help solve the problem. And remember as well, the betting is so much down when there's these small fields. They're entertaining and they're for the anoraks who love to see the quality horses sort of striding on and all that sort of thing. But the betting is virtually, the turnover is, is absolutely on the floor. So they're bad for racing. They're appalling for the integrity of racing. Let's do something to reassure the public racing isn't bent, it isn't fixed, and by having smaller fields, it reinforces the prejudice there is against the sport. So, um, small fields, I don't like them, betting turnover doesn't like them, and it's the only way to do it is have no race with less than six runners. Why don't the BHA look at that? It wouldn't cost anything, but for the integrity of the game, our belief in the game, that would be so important. 
Come on, question number three, Bobe. Question number three from Matt Fairweather on Facebook asks, you tell it as it is, and oh, some people God. don't like it, but I think no, it's great. No. Do you think UK racing needs some kind of boost in the way of returns for the punter? Well, Matt, you started the question very well, and um, a great <laughs> intro like that. I go along with that. And Booby, read out, come on, read out the intro. The intro, listen, listen, Matt, this is terrific. Go on, yes, go on, Booby. Tell it as it is. Yeah, I tell it as it is. Oh, yes, go, go on, Booby. And some people don't like no, it. No, they don't, they don't like it. Go on, Booby. Which I think it's great. I, good for you, Matt, absolutely terrific. Well, re read it. No, no, we won't, we won't read it. No, um, should punters be given uh, more? I have to remember, and this is. All people say this, but this is an absolute fact. Our betting opportunities are the finest in the world. You go over to, and I say, I go on the chat shows in America and all that, I keep on saying it. In America, you can't have a Yankee. Four horses, six doubles, four trebles, and an accumulator. You can't have bets like that. You can't take a price in, in America. And in many other countries, these tote monopoly countries, you're relying on the pari mutual. The choices we've got bookmakers offer the morning prices you've got anti pros prices you've got the exchanges with betdac and betfair you've got the, um, uh, the 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 prices on the race course you've got the markets the, the opportunities is so great compared to any other country and the and they go you know four places and 16 runner plus handicaps and all that kind of thing disqualified horses but make us pay out on the winner and the uh, the winner and the promoted horse. these opportunities you've got i'm not going into any of the concessions they get free bets and if you're beaten a neck or something by the favorite you get your money back. all these uh, the market forces competitions they have in places like super, supermarkets i don't know what a supermarket is never been in one in my life but booby does all that but they have these sort of things that they put in cheap so you buy things in vile things whatever they do their marketing forces that's what the bookmakers are doing so i'm absolutely thinking our betting is the finest in the world the best opportunities in the world you can't expect bookmakers to give even more concessions and there's some talk for instance of using and there's a separate issue the whip issue of disqualifying horse horses ridden by jockeys who break the rules with the whip now forget the whip issue itself and of course we shouldn't be beating horses in the name of sport anyway we should do away with the whip for hitting horses just keeping them for straightening but if that rule was brought in that the bookmaker bookmakers then wouldn't be able to con have this concession of paying the winner and the promoted horse so in other words that would really hit punters so i think our, our betting is the finest in the world and that's people say lots of things in britain are the finest in the world they're not but this their betting opportunities everywhere around the world they're envious of us they've all got the the feeling that the tote monopoly that that's what keeps racing going abroad and it turns punters off abroad why is racing in such decline in america in france people few people go racing it's been challenged you know by the by the trotting in in france around the world japan it's a tote monopoly do you want that so we've got the best betting in the world best opportunities we've got all you've got to go and do now is pick the winners and back them. Thanks anyway, all for watching. I hope you put up with those rants and they weren't, they weren't too, too sort of in your face and all that thing. But make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, my old YouTube channel, and keep sending in your questions on Twitter at Real McCrurick and Facebook slash. By the way, they always say forward slash. Is there ever a backward slash? Can somebody please tell me, why do people say a forward slash, forward slash? It's, there's no such thing as a backward slash. Anyway, slash um, for Facebook, slash Real McCreek by adding at Ask Big Mac. And if I didn't answer your question this week, it might be next week. I need more questions. Bring them in and the booby will read them out. Your question.